our vision statement for 2023 is connect to God, connect with people, share hope. The Apostle Peter, 1 Peter 3, and if anyone asks about the hope living within you, always be ready to explain your faith. To share your hope and explain your faith is one of God's purposes for your life. It is the expression of your hope that opens the door to the explanation of your faith. By being hopeful, people will ask you why and you can share your faith. Last Sunday, we dealt with part two of this series. As you know, in part one, we ask, what of hope? Uh, why is it so important? How do you share hope? And then last Sunday in part two, we looked at the who of hope and the what then? The who of hope, the heirs of salvation. And I gave you this statement, if we value people as eternal, we will view them as priceless. The who of hope. Who are we sharing our hope with? The heirs of salvation. Our real legacy is not in the businesses we start, the monuments we build, or the books that we write, but our real legacy is in the people that we touch, the heirs of salvation, the people, our heirs, that we take with us. Starting businesses, writing books are important, but, but what's more important than the business or the book is the people we touch, our children, our grandchildren, and others around us the heirs that we take with us, the heirs of salvation, those that will live forever. So as we, as we value people as eternal, we view them as priceless and we make the investment. And then we talked about the what then of hope, understanding lifestyle evangelism. Well, what then, well, what should I do? Well, you have to know that you're a witness, you're an apprentice and you're an ambassador. You're a witness. You don't have to worry about being a theologian. All you gotta do is tell your story, share your testimony. You're an apprentice, you don't have to worry about doing it perfect. Aren't you glad that we're all learning every day? And you're an ambassador though. Learn to step into your authority as a representative of God's kingdom. If you'll speak, the anointing will come and people's lives will be touched. And the reason we are dealing with this is because hope is oxygen to the human soul. And there are those souls that need your breath of hope. Last Sunday, part two. So today, I wanna to take up where we left off. I wanna to speak to you for a few minutes about creating hope in others. And then we're, conclude, we're concluding this series. Creating hope in others. Ephesians 2, verse 12, at that time, you were without Christ, having no hope and without God in the world. I read that to you because I want to remind you that there are so many in our world around us that have no hope. They have no hope for tomorrow. The word hope in the dictionary means optimistic expectation of a positive outcome. Optimistic expectation of something good is coming. That's hope. So five ways that you can create hope in others. Number one, become a kingdom ambassador. Second Corinthians five. Now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Notice verse 19 and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. He's committed that word to us. He's entrusted that word to us. We have the ministry of reconciling fallen man to Holy Father. It's our job. It's our responsibility. And it begs the question, if we don't do this, then who will? Other nonprofits can't get this done. Good organizations can't get this done. It's committed to the church of Jesus Christ. We are the ones that have to reconcile fallen man with Holy Father. It's committed to us. It's a word that he's given us, a word that's living. But as I mentioned to you before, that word committed, it speaks of a divine appointment. 
not only has he given you that word, but he wants to set you up with divine appointments to share that word with others. You see, I believe if we as the people of God are need conscious, that means we're conscious of people around us all the time. We're always paying attention. I've told you before, I tell my grandkids all the time, pay attention, pay attention. Accidents happen. So you gotta pay attention. And so in life, we have to pay attention. We have to watch. And if we would learn to pay attention, to have ears that hear, eyes that see, hearts that understand, I believe God will set us up with divine appointments to share that word that he has appointed, committed to us. Divine appointments. You're an ambassador. So here's a statement for you this morning that I hope will get into your spirit. As an ambassador of the kingdom of God, a representative, a representative of God's kingdom, wherever I go, there is an authority that rests upon us. And when we step out into that authority and we begin to speak, telling our story, sharing our testimony, I believe the anointing, heaven will back us up and that word will go forth and will bring about transformation in people's lives. But as ambassadors know this, if you commit to the position, Holy Spirit will schedule the appointment. And that's something that I hope you'll grab this morning, that this is not complicated. That if I will commit to being an ambassador of the kingdom of God, an ambassador of One City Church, that wherever I go into this community, I'm an ambassador, I represent him. If I will commit to that position, I believe the Holy Spirit will commit or set up an appointment for me to share that word. Number two, how to create hope in other people. Watch for moments that matter. Learn the language of hopelessness. Learn it. Do you know if you'll just listen to people, they'll reveal their hand. The Bible says for the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. If we'll learn to listen to people, they'll tell us where they're at. If you'll just pay attention, just listen to it. We need to have ears that hear, listening ears, listening ears. Don't just hear the sound, but listen for the meaning. It's like the difference between hearing your wife speak during the football game and truly listening to the meaning of what she's saying. <laughs> How many times have you heard the noise during the game and then she says, did you, did you hear what I just said? Sure I did. <laughs> Say it again. <laughs> There's a difference. And we can't just hear noise, but we have to listen for meaning. Learn the language of hopelessness and design a moment to create hope. Design a moment. That means be intentional, be deliberate, slow down, stop. And I'm going to design a moment. There are times when you have to be spontaneous. There are times when you can schedule it, but you can design a moment to create hope. Remember in the video that I showed you, Clint said, Mr. Jensen said to him, I know who you are. And he gave Clint his first set of drumsticks. You see, he designed a moment to create hope. I love the statement when he said to him, I know who you are. Are we paying attention? Do we know who people are? Do we know where they're living, what they're going through? Do we know who people are? And that's so powerful. And he pulled out those drumsticks and he gave them to you. So listen to this. A single moment in time can change a life for a lifetime. A single moment in time. Just a moment in time can change a life for a lifetime where you just stop as a Mr. Jensen and you look at a young boy and you give him a set of drumsticks and you change his life forever. So watch for moments that matter. I've seen them come by me and pass me by and other times I've seen them come and I took advantage of it. And the times that I did, I saw powerful things happen. 
how to create hope in others. Number three, embrace the uncomfortable. Your greatest growth experience is outside your comfort zone. Now, we all have comfort zones. We all have things we're comfortable with and things we're uncomfortable with. And you have to know, though, that your greatest growth is outside your comfort zone. We should, every week of our life, try to find something to do that makes us feel uncomfortable. It was said many years ago, and I can't remember who who actually said it, but the statement was made, we must become comfortable with the uncomfortable. We have to be comfortable with being stretched outside our comfort zone. We really should, as people of God, we really should identify the things that we're uncomfortable with and then embrace those things because that's where your greatest growth takes place. That's where your greatest experience in life will be found. When you do those things that you're uncomfortable with, It's like anything, physical exercise. Your greatest growth is when you're uncomfortable, when you add weight to the barbell and you push through the pain. That's when the muscle begins to break down and you begin to expand and you begin to grow. And so you've got to push yourself outside of your comfort zone because that's where your greatest experience will be. Hebrews 13, but do good and to communicate, forget not. I mean, how plainer can it get? Don't forget to communicate. Say it. For with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. It is a sacrifice. It is. You have to be uncomfortable. You have to be able to speak out, speak up, reach out to people. The fear of rejection, the fear of making a mistake. You've got to push through that. And you've got to be able to stand up and be willing to look foolish in the eyes of men. The Bible says Jesus made himself of no reputation. You have to be willing to expose yourself, to be transparent, to run the risk, to take the risk, to take the chance, to run the risk of people looking at you as being fanatical or crazy or foolish, to speak up, to reach out, to dare to believe These are the things that we have to do to become comfortable with the uncomfortable. And so here's the statement that I made to you here a couple of weeks ago. If we are willing to do the uncomfortable, others can accomplish the impossible. If I am willing to do something that's uncomfortable, even in this moment, I've been preaching for since I was 15 years old. I've told you the story. The night I preached my first message is the night Suzanne saw me for the first time. She heard me preach my first message and she fell in love to me in that very moment. (laughs) She'd been chasing me ever since. (laughs) But here at 61, 61, and she had her birthday. She just turned 62, but I'm still 61. I married an older woman. Listen. Focus. But even at 61, I come before you, as Paul said, He wrote the church at Corinth. He said, I come before you with fear and trembling. Even now at 61, there are moments when I'm fearful and trembling before you, praying that I'll say the right thing the right way so people can get help, so people's lives can be transformed. I was up early this morning before daylight and I was in my house walking. I was praying, God, you've got to anoint me today. Don't leave us to our own devices They don't need to hear from me. They need to hear from you. The anointing makes the difference. I fear coming to this pulpit without the anointing. It scares the daylights out of me. I need the anointing that that's what breaks the yoke. That's what makes the difference. To say a living word, a rhema word that can transform people's lives. So powerful. So no matter how old you get, no matter how much experience you have, there are times when you're uncomfortable, but you have to be comfortable with the uncomfortable because if you do that, people can accomplish the impossible. 
Think of that. You can change somebody's life. How to create hope in others. Number four, ask possibility questions. See the possibility in the problem. Think of the video that we just watched. See the possibility in the problem. See the potential in the person. You see, Mr. Jensen said, I don't think you are a problem. I think you're a drummer. And he saw the drummer and the tapper. That's what kingdom people do. That's what prophetic people do. That's what people do that are born again, spirit filled, that have a different perspective of life. We don't look from earth to heaven. We look from heaven back down to earth. And we see the possibilities in the problem where God can take a Moses who stutters and make him his voice to his people. You see, they see the potential in the person. They see the woman taken in adultery and they see a handmaiden of the Lord. You see, that's what we do as kingdom people. We see different, we hear different, we know different. And that's what we have to do. We have to learn to ask the possibility questions. So here's the, que here's the statement, help others see the possibility of what could be. What could be. He said to him, I don't think you're a problem. I think you're a drummer. I don't think, I, I, don't, I don't think you're just a tapper. You're a musician. I, he saw the potential in this young boy. Number five, creating hope in others. As we've been preaching, and I have to finish up with this here this morning to cap it off. You've got to loan your hope. You've got to loan your hope. You've got to just share that with others. We gave you the acrostic. It's the gift of hope. You remember it. S stands for share with others what God said. As you're talking to people and you're listening and you find yourself in that divine appointment to share hope, take this acrostic and use it to help people. Look at them and said, let me share with you what my God said about you. And then H stands for help them to see the extraordinary things that can be done, the extraordinary possibilities in an ordinary life, that God wants to do something extraordinary through you, extraordinary. He wants to do something through your life. A, activate their faith in God. Pray with them. Can I introduce you to Christ? Can I share Christ with you? R, reinforce their commitment to the future. Reinforce their commitment that it's not over. They do have a future. There is hope. There is a tomorrow. And tomorrow is going to be better than today. You got to reinforce their commitment. And then E, expect great things of them. Tell them, listen, I'm going to be checking on you. I'm going to be calling you. I'm going to be checking on you at work. I'm expecting great things of you. People, people live up to your expectations. Believe in people and they will rise to that standard of belief if we'll just expect great things of them. So here's a statement for you this morning. I want you to grab, never deprive anyone of hope. It may be all that he or she has left. That's all they may have. When you meet the hopeless, And you find yourself in that moment, a divine appointment. And you take that acrostic and you share with them. And you look at them and you, you give them the bracelet off your wrist. And you say, here, take this bracelet. I, I'm going to loan my hope to you until you find your own. Because Romans said, Romans 15, 13, may the God of hope fill you with all joy. So here, take my wristband. This is my hope. And I want you to wear it. It's a loner. I'm loaning you my hope until you find your own. 
And then one day when you find your own hope, take that wristband and you give it away to somebody else. And you tell them here, I'm gonna loan you my hope until you find your own. That's how we change the world, one at a time. Stephen, come help me. In Hebrews chapter 11 and verse one. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance of what we do not see. Very familiar scripture. And so today, I wanted to create a moment at the conclusion of this series for you to take a step of faith. For the hopeful, a step of faith towards the fulfillment of what you're hoping for. For the hopeless, a step of faith towards restoring your hope. And I want to create this moment because of what I said just a moment ago. A single moment in time can change a life for a lifetime, for a lifetime. Just a single, simple moment. So, I want to remind you of Hebrews 6, where he said, we have this certain hope, like a strong, unbreakable anchor holding our souls to God himself. Our anchor of hope is fastened by the mercy seat which sets in the heavenly realm beyond the sacred threshold. Sometime back, the end of last year, I made a statement to you. I said, don't secure your soul to the past experience, but anchor it in your future hope. I want to remind you of that here this morning. To anchor your soul and your future hope. Now, I remind you of that because it's so vital. It's so important. In a world right now that's so unstable, in a world that's like shifting sand, it's so important that your soul is anchored to your future hope. You gotta do that. Because I have found when people become hopeless, their faith begins to fade. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. And if you have nothing to hope for, what's the purpose of your faith? So I've watched through the years as people get hopeless and when they get hopeless, their faith begins to fade and they begin to drift out of the church. So you've got to make sure your soul is not anchored in, the, in, 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 the, in Wall Street or in the government or in the marketplace, but your soul is anchored in your future hope in Christ Jesus on the mercy seat, God's mercy. It's gotta be anchored there. So two steps of faith this morning. To the hopeful, I wanna encourage you to take a, a step of faith towards the cross and believe for your miracle. There are some here this morning that perhaps you need salvation. I mentioned it earlier during communion. Maybe you need to give your heart and your life to the Lord. This is your day of salvation. I wanna encourage you to move towards the cross and give your heart to the Lord. There are some of you that you've been hoping for a miracle in your body. I'm gonna encourage you to move towards the cross. There are gonna be some of you that you've been, you've been hoping for a financial miracle, a breakthrough. I'm gonna encourage you to move to this side of the sanctuary, move towards the cross, and we're gonna lay hands on you, we're gonna pray for you. But to the hopeful, to those that are believing for a miracle and whatever category that miracle is, whatever it's financial or emotional or spiritual or whatever, physical, whatever your miracle is, I need you to take a step of faith because faith is a substance of things hoped for. You take a step of faith towards the cross. And I'm gonna pray for you. But there are others to the hopeless to the hopeless, you've lost your hope. As we've said so many times, when so much becomes too much, oftentimes people become hopeless. And I'm gonna encourage you to take a step of faith towards the ark and reconnect to God. Because Hebrews 6 said, our anchor of hope is fastened to the mercy seat. And you have to remember that those two cherubims on top of the mercy seat 
with her wings pointed inward, I believe they represent grace and mercy. And that's the place where God sat down. It was a mercy seat. God would sit down when he would meet with Israel. They called it the Shekinah glory, a blue flame on the day of atonement, they said would appear between the two cherubims on the one day a year when the high priest would come in to make atonement. But he told Israel, he said, listen, you build the tabernacle and I will meet with you there. And he pointed towards that mercy seat. And God would sit down on that mercy and grace. And it was there that he would meet with Israel. It was the only piece of furniture in the tabernacle that was strong enough to bear the weightiness of his presence. Mercy and grace. And this morning, some of you have become hopeless and you need to attach the anchor of your soul back to his mercy. You need to reconnect to the Father's love for you, to the Father's care, his grace and his mercy. And you have to latch on to that, knowing that tomorrow is going to be better than, the, than today. You can't hope again. It's just a moment that we're making here. Just creating a moment. But a moment in time that could change you for a lifetime.